What a tangent. Why do I always have to go on tangents? prototype Range Rover update active fabrication zone right so there's like uh, you know I used to spend a lot more time making sure stuff's presentable but I'm gonna be right back on this thing in 12 hours and I'm just gonna leave it how it is before we go into this we need to touch back into the inside portions that we were talking about last update. If you don't remember that, just go back to the last update. I think what we're gonna do too is let's change all the titles. I was thinking about this, Joey, we should change all the titles and even the thumbnails and put part one, part two, very bold, because if this thing's a big nasty series, even if it says it in the description, I think still seeing a thumbnail with, you know, so then right now I could go, well, if you didn't see part four, then go back and check part four before you watch part five. I talked last time about Colin doing this stuff, Colin doing all the sheet metal, because essentially Colin's built this whole car. Uh, I've helped him with the design direction, but really it's been his construction, um, and that's a big deal. I don't, Colin's 25, I, I was, I had my head so far up my ass at 25. I was just living. <clears throat> uh, the timelines in the I, I just, I think naturally the complexity of this stuff, the efficiency had to be me starting on it and doing it because it just was gonna be to convey, it's not just like conveying how I want things to be here, but it's also figuring out how they need to be almost in the process of constructing them one-to-one. -one. Uh, and I, I mean, you have to think if I'm, if I'm telling Colin or in directing design and all this stuff, it's easy when we're like, roll the tube here, you know, roll it here, have this gusset, start a third on this top tube and then draw two thirds down so it's more of a pedestal that's holding the structure up instead of a 45. Like I can communicate a lot of that. That stuff's pretty easy. Once it gets into these organic shapes, then I'm gonna spend so much time in here figuring out how things work and then stopping what I'm doing on something else, coming over here. It's gonna be extremely inefficient, uh, not just for myself, but for Colin. So uh, I've really taken the reins back on this thing with the sheet metal. Um, is Colin gonna go back and work on this? 100%. I think the next time you're gonna see his appearance, um, besides having to tag team this thing for events coming up, uh, he'll, the main one that we're gonna hit is gonna be all, I wanna give him all the turbo piping. Um, we're gonna run titanium exhaust on this thing, all the cool shit. So that's the next, um, era of Colin, but right now it's going to be you and I, and we're going to talk about this thing and the stuff that I've done. Uh, Joe, you want to come on, on my side too and see the seat in here because the seat, one of the things to press on this, we're going to cover the inside and then we'll go to the back. One of the things to press is the styling on this car. And it, I just, I know I'm a broken record with this, but that's why we are a design studio. We don't just take shells of vehicles and then build the same thing into them over and over, like cookie cutter style stuff. And we don't just use traditional design with fabrication. We stretch the limits. We find the highest form of function. And then we twist all the styling and design to tailor it to what the vehicle wants and how, how the stuff is speaking to us. The shapes on the Range Rover are extremely dynamic, very hypercarish. The actual Velar shell that we started with already has these beautiful lines of tension, like someone sketched it and there was, there was drama on the surfaces already. Uh, and they knew it. When you look at the B pillar, they have a little stamping on there. When you open the door, that's like a little Easter egg. And it's literally this silhouette, like side profile sketch of the Velar that's in the production model. 
mixing these seats in here, finding something that, that still goes with the, the styling. You know, these are 720S McLaren seats. They're carbon shell. Uh, they're a, a gorgeous seat. So that, having that it, with the styling of the car, tying all that into these windows, right? This is the thing is we don't want to just have sheet metal that's flat panel like a rear chassis of a old pre-runner truck or something with triangles and that and here's the perimeter so i'm going to do a step roll that follows the perimeter we want this thing to have a flow to it that's like nothing else and not so much where it's, it's busy and it doesn't make sense but but enough where it's like a like a hypercar or supercar it's an extreme design but it's also a beautiful design and that's what we're pressing into this so that has to be pulled into everything we do, even if it's a harness bar. Uh, you know, when the the billet suspension goes on here, all like the lowers and the uppers and the uprights and the trailing arms, that's going to represent this car too. Uh, it's just as styled. So uh, let's cover the inside, and then we'll go to the rear. First things to look at here, look at the seat design, look at the flow, look at the bolstering, the shapes, and that really draws back into the openings. I'm going to hop in here, uh, there's just the seats in there for proof of concept. Obviously the driver's side is not, but that'll give us a good window to look at the windows. So this is what we talked about originally, right? We wanted to have um, an open spatial presence back here where we're not just closing off this entire rear. It would be really easy. There's a lot of very simple shapes you could make where you could do panel work where you just close out a triangle, close out a triangle, close out a triangle, block it off, block flat stuff off or a couple breaks. And then you get, um, you know, your same result where stuff is is closed or sealed up but it doesn't lend itself to it just closes this interior space up more it makes it more like claustrophobic style <clears throat> um, and it doesn't let any daylight in so what we have here is like we talked about this back shelf the shape that you see here this radial shape that's the spare um, that's the house for the spare this is all I'm just gonna adjust myself this is all quarter inch. All the hardware is hiding in here. Um, it's all 1024 and it's it's grasping this whole thing and then it's tabbed up onto the body too. So this is not just like a trim plate that's floating. Um, it's actually capturing the glass and it's really strong. Uh, it's, you know, once all the stuff's powder coated and upholstered and stuff, I think there's gonna be a really nice look here, but you can see what we, what we were going for. You know, you can see the rear tubes out back through the glass. This is all a nice like spatial shelf, so I can get my hand back through here. There's actually a, a mood light back here, a Baja Designs map light hiding in there. Uh, and that's built in a way where you won't see it. So obviously these would come on as dome lights, but this light would just be ambient because it's so buried in here that once that turns on, it would just cast ambient light down, probably have like a big reflection of these tubes, you know, where the chassis is. And that can be there where it's not gonna be this bright light that's a nuisance. It can just live there. Um, it, I think you could even live it there. You live there while you're driving the car. Uh, all this stuff is one panel. Um, I think with Dan's truck, we talked about metal shaping um, and metal forming. <clears throat> and that was the last time I really dive, dove into doing that kind of stuff. This is the next version. Uh, there's several pieces in here. One piece two piece, three pieces, I think. Uh, a lot of this shape is, is put in here um, from a planishing hammer. And another thing is we wanted to have a transition, a smooth transition from sheet metal, from, from factory trim, like this stuff here. We wanted all of this to transition into the aluminum in a way where uh, it was natural and organic. And it wasn't just, like I said, typical style panels. 
Uh, and that's what we have. There's glass in here. This is mock-up. This is quarter-inch acrylic. Uh, it's just living in there for now until we put the real stuff in, the optic armor. Same with this. You know, all the windows are in. I have, I have yellow tape on the outside of this stuff just because uh, it is sensitive to sparks. And if you, you know, you do throw any kind of sanding sparks at it, it'll pit it. Uh, and I noticed that already on this side by accident. So that's just there to protect stuff. Uh, the way that these panels come on and off is with a slot. So there's a, there's a notch around the, the door or the harness bar here. And then under this overlay, this is a 3 16 overlay of aluminum, there's a slot. So this whole thing can come off. And then there's one big, clear, transparent partition that lives in there too. Uh, and it acts as a seal as well. So there's obviously some incomplete areas, like one of the uncomfortable areas for me right now is these corners. You know, like there needs to be trim, there needs to be a closeout in this area. And then this needs to be followed through the same way. Uh, and then obviously you have a moon roof in here. And that moon roof is gonna live in there. It'll just be glued in. It's not gonna be mechanized or anything, but it will be a daylight opening. So right now we're kind of calling it on the inside. Till further notice, we're gonna get this thing ready to be displayed at a couple shows with some vendors. Uh, and I'm gonna, I'll reveal that stuff later, but really we're just, we're getting as much stuff as we can chunked out that makes sense. Um, and some of those details will leave to wrap up um, when the car's done being displayed. Just going up here to look at this stuff. That's your moonroof in the front. And this is what we talked about with, with ducting going down. So this back glass is acting as your ducting. There will be where you see these Clecos and you see the hardware. We'll have another trim panel come on here. So you're not gonna see like the ugliness of like the, where the notch is to get this thing in and out. Um, it'll, look, it'll look dressed and appointed. Um, same with all this meat here. Like all this stuff that's you know three or four inches here is all gonna get trimmed out and there'll be a nice piece of trim in here. I think we talked about some of this. Uh, nice piece of trim in here that, that just lives this. It'll be just an opening, an active air opening. Uh, I don't think we're gonna put any kind of treatment there or you know woven stainless mesh or anything like that. kind of covers the inside right now uh, again if there's questions you guys we pay attention if you want to know more about this or anything also check my Instagram I keep that thing pretty locked and loaded with updates I know some of you know that I know also some of you just watch YouTube I also know some of you guys aren't subscribed and you should just subscribe it helps us out like comment subscribe that whole thing there's a reason people say that it's not just to be a fucking douche so that brings us to the rear Talking about this before, ventilation and heat extraction is huge. There's cooling in here. This is a this is an oil cooler. There's two oil coolers from Triton Race Coolers, one on each side. They're both symmetrical. They're billet. They have all the good shit on them. That's just that's the only cooling that's happening back here. The radiator is front mount, so it's really just there's going to be turbos in here. They'll live in this void. There's headers. It's a sealed cabin back there with a hatch. Uh, the name of the game here is to get all the hot air out. Um, there's enough coming in to move fresh air in, but it's really just about getting it all out. So that's the that's really what has to happen with design here with the panels. The second thing is functionality of the panels, serviceability. So like designing all this. This is here this is a this is the primary panel that would come up before everything else there's a lot of overlap in these panels and then this is the secondary panel i'm thinking okay well if you want to service this thing and you need to get to stuff what's most important that should be the first panel that comes off because if some of this stuff's layered you need to not bury your priority panel underneath a bunch of other stuff so that's where we're at there's a little bit of asymmetry here uh the Dry sump oil tank is hanging out here. This is just a mock-up, so if you see this fitting that's in line of sight for the axles and everything else under the sun, 
that's not going to be there. Um, this is an Era 1 dry sump tank. It, you know, I did have a guy ask about, like, well, what happens if a rock hits it and this and that? I would be very willing to just hit this with a hammer, but that's probably not the right thing to do. To have a projectile come and hit this besides a rifle caliber, I don't know what's going to puncture it. You might get a ding. Uh, but really, you have to think there's a trailing arm here. The tire is so far outside of here that it's not even close. If you shredded a tire or something, it's just not a thing. Plus, there's no fittings. So really, you just have tin work, and then you have another piece that's just hanging out here. It's not a detriment. Uh, it's very protected, and it's above ground on the chassis. Like Even when this thing bottoms out, it doesn't come close. There's not actually a way to... You'd have to get into some real weird circumstances to have damage happen to that thing. So that's where that's at. But what I'm getting at is there's asymmetry here. We'll go look at the other side. Uh, there's, there's a function of the axle and the CV joint needs to cycle through here. So that's why this cut is here and the shape is here. There is cooling that needs to happen. The cooler sticks out past the shape and the surfaces of of like the perimeter of the tin work. So that's why there's this shape. This cut here, you might have to readjust. This is not like just for style, but this is to clear the piggyback, the fin reservoir on the bypass shock. So all of this is here for a reason. I mean, it does, yes, it looks cool, but it's really a purposeful thing. The cut in here, you're gonna have to shuffle again. There's a bevel in here, right? This is this angle to clear the trailing arm going up and down. I had to put that on there and cycle it. So like everything again is functionally there. Like you wonder about this. Okay, well, why is this pocket so dramatic? Why is this dragging on? Well, this is the end of the window in here. This is so you can service and get tools to get to your spare tire like cradle. So it's all here and it's all functional. It's just styled with our language and design language in it. Uh, we can check the other side. Well, you probably have the most amount of real estate to talk about this. This is something that wasn't here last time that I might have talked about. The car is what it requires for body panels to clear the tires at compression is it requires a 14 inch wider body panel than factory, right? So if you consider this where your body panel starts to teardrop down to the wheel opening factory, it needs to go out 14 inches from there. So what we had here is we just had factory OEM shell where it had like the cut, the clearance for the 37 inch tire at compression. It doesn't need that. It just needs to be adapted into shape. So what this is, is this is just drawn out. This is cut. There'll be tin work that goes in here and captures this and it'll go behind the panel so you'll have quarter turn fasteners, but really this, this will live on the car. And then it'll also have some pickups on the horizontal side where once we get the panels on or the, the fenders on, we'll have another trim piece that comes out and like cleans up all the perimeter of it that bolts to this. So I know that's a lot to take in and you just, what you can do is just try to follow me. I will show the process and it's been pretty productive where I can tell you how this is going to go and what it's going to look like. And then we execute it and we move to the next thing. Um, and I've even like looked back on this stuff and I'm like, damn, that's very helpful for me too, because I kind of pre-run this stuff with you guys. Uh, and pre-run, I mean, like I get, I get some forethought and some visionary exercise before executing the stuff and it works. Um, it's, it's a huge thing with this, this, this vehicle itself, the Dakar prototype, has been the most immense amount of planning and packaging that we've done on anything, not just because it's a, a solid ground up vehicle, but it's also a rear engine. It's in an SUV um, and it's a ton of parts and packaging that need to go in here that are not meant to go in here. So uh, it's been beautiful. The other thing here for myself is extremely rewarding to work on this now. Um, I haven't, like I said, I've, I've lived vicariously with Colin through this thing uh, and, and he's been executing, but for me to be able to like, I'm back into my favorite flow state of, you know, going to bed at night. Um, I can think about what I'm going to do in the morning, wake up in the morning on the way in, on the way to the gym, I can process my get shit done list and then I can do this 
and I can just think about how I'm gonna do stuff and I'm really looking forward to it. Some of these other projects that I've been on, I'm, I'm extremely grateful for, but they've been daunting. Just like, God, I gotta get them done. We just gotta, you know, it's not this, this level of creative liberty uh, and licensing on something like this. This is like my, my pinnacle of um, quality of life and value. So it's been extremely gratifying to do this stuff. Okay, so let's look at the other side just to touch on this, but this is what to expect next here is encapsulate this area. The latch for the door needs to be relocated because we still are gonna use the skeleton and the bones of the doors, but we can't use where the latching mechanism was, which was probably right here. So that guy needs to go up here. The door handle itself will go on the new fender. So that doesn't need to be in the same relative place. We just need to make sure we have the catch mechanism here and then we can figure out all the linkage as we need to. This makes more sense to draw through here. And then what we'll have here is this, there will be another panel that will come up and wrap into this. And then we'll panel the whole lower portion here and we'll put a big skid plate under there, under the, the powertrain. So let's look at the other side. One of the most helpful and efficient things for me is to, I preach this and I struggle with it and I have to just practice what I preach is if you're doing an extensive project and it's especially if it's double sided, it's really easy ADHD style to like just keep going, oh, oh yeah, oh keep going, keep going, keep going. And then you, you could be 200 steps in on something or 300 steps in on something on this process and then you have to go do the other side again. and. It is so much more mentally difficult and um, less efficient too, because sometimes when you're in the groove, if you're able to do, if you have to do a bunch of stuff to this one, then you already know what you need to do, what tools you need to do. You have the stuff out, you're ready to do it. You should just transfer over and do the other side. And I've been really trying to grind on myself with this because it's so appetizing to just keep going. Uh, that I, that's what I want to do and my brain wants to do but I'm grateful because I've kept consistent. So right now, mid process, um, you know, I have like some notes here, like this, this X is just notifying me. There's a Clico hole here. There's some inconsistencies on this guy that need to be fixed. Uh, you know, this is just tacked partially welded. So I'll have to blend this out. Uh, and then we also, this is a little different of a shape here. This still works in correspondence with the CV and the axle. And that's why it has a pole of design here. I really like this, uh, this little tiny wall in here, you know, where it goes, the tube intersects flat. And then this guy, this guy retains this and goes through on the backside of the tube. So it, it adds that dimensional thing where the chassis and the sheet metal are kind of meshing together. Uh, this doesn't need the dry sump tank at all. Uh, but what it does need, you know, I implemented this rib, if you want to call it, like this interceptor piece into the bead roll and the layout because this would just be floating and it wouldn't be structurally sound. So instead of doing something basic again, where it's like make a triangle here and a triangle here, it just makes sense to just take a paintbrush and go whoosh like that with a with like an interceptor piece that has tension that draws into the next part. And then that's also a functional piece. So when you put your mesh in there, everything is rigid and you don't have a floating form piece right next to the axle. So everything's pretty much caught up. This piece itself, see this is how crude it is when you start. That's how all this stuff is. All this stuff just starts from raw sheet and it's just super rough. I kind of know how, how to play this where I can run this stuff extremely rough until I need to tighten it up to get it to fit where we want it. This is going to be the backer piece. It'll live under here. Every mark you see here will be a Clico for now, but it'll be a quarter turn fastener. And this backer piece will be welded to this area. So it'll live here. It'll be this dimensional shape where like the horizontal portion of the fender opening is. And what that does is then that still allows this primary panel to live on top of it. So once this is in here and it's fixed, it won't move. It, you know, the bottom will do its thing. And then you'll be able to just take this guy off 
all by itself as one big panel. Once this comes off, it's wide open. You can service everything. You can get to the CVs, you can get to the starter, you can get to anything you need there. You can get to the intercoolers, you'll be able to get to the waste gates, the turbos, just everything, coil packs, anything you need. Um, so really that's why we just need these two main guys on each side to come off. If we want to dive further into what's gonna go on next, well, let's think update wise. We will shoot an update. I think the next one will be where this is at its place uh, on display um, at its next event with the vendor. Uh, we'll have Joey out there and we'll shoot it live out there. How I like it to be displayed. Let's go to the front really quick. I'd like it to be displayed. All the shocks on, all the reservoirs in. We have special reservoirs from King for all the fluids for the clutch and the front and rear brake. <clears throat> the upper arms, so like I've mentioned before, this whole car is gonna get a new like kit. We're gonna keep all the bulkhead and all the pivots, but all the, the rear trailing arm and the front suspension assemblies have all been scanned. I've spent, you know, a couple hundred hours sketching the arms, the uppers, the lowers, and the uprights. I haven't touched the rear trailing arms yet. And then that has to go to a surfacer, a class A surfacer, and he puts all that into a digital model, and then it goes to Joe, and then Joe tightens it all and makes it spec and checks all the clearances and makes sure everything can cycle. So we've been going through that process after hours. I mean, I do, I follow up with emails during the day while we're working, and then at night I go home and I make the revisions. Um, so when we present this next, I want to have at least the upper arms on. Um, they're big, beautiful sculpted pieces of 775 aluminum. Have those on. The front radiator is supposed to be here. It's not. Uh, I'm going to be pretty discouraged because this huge ass bumper looks so out of place until you put the headlamps on and the radiator. I don't think you can mount the headlamps appropriately unless you have the radiator here. So I'm gonna cross my fingers on that. Um, but that's that's where I wanna have this thing. Um, we're running a new set of wheels. You guys will get to see what we have on those. They are prototypes. Um, they're gonna be gorgeous. We will have all the rear tin work done. And this thing pretty much is, as much of a completion as you see. Um, and then some you know, final out like the door openings. You wanna come over here, Joey? Final out the door openings, all, all of this stuff is just clecoed in right now, so it'll need to be tapped, um, drilled and tapped, and then there'll need to be proper hardware and all this, at least so we can shut the doors. We'll have to trim the rear doors to make sure, that, you know, if there's excess sheet metal that doesn't clear this stuff, then we need to trim it. We'll leave them really crude where you'll see the guts of them, they're not gonna be finished out. All the shocks are on. Uh, rear suspension on. I think the turbos will still not be here until SEMA. Dash will go back in. I think that'll be it. Now, let's just pre-run a little further. 76 millimeter turbos. We upgraded the turbo size. Uh, still don't know exactly on manufacturer. I'm working with both Garrett and Precision on this thing. Um, so it's gonna be a, a battle of who does this. Regardless, they'll go in here and we have billet flanges here. Billet flanges will go feed all of our turbo piping into the turbos. The turbos will live in this void here. If I open this, should get a little more light in there. Uh, but they'll, you know, they're built to live right here. They'll get all their cooling um, and they'll also have enough space for everything we need to do. The one thing that we wanted to do is throw the exhaust into an X. That's kind of been a, a new discovery. We know that we want like it, everything to exit right here, wastegate and turbo exhaust. But it needs to do an X before that. And then you go, oh shit, well, how do you do that if you don't have any room? So we're gonna have to run down and we'll have to run under here, throw an X right in your face here, and then run back up and exit. Uh, all that stuff is gonna be titanium. 
We've never done titanium. I don't do pie cuts no matter what, so you won't see that. But at least turbo piping will run all stainless and then all the exhaust will be titanium. Um, a lot of that is just for sound. Um, and you know, obviously there's a good visual aspect of that. So there'll be a matrix of tubing running through back here. When you close the hatch, you can see there's real estate. You know, there'll be a big valence that goes here and you can see like there's quite a void. So it's tight, but it's not impossible. And that's usually how we end up with everything. So the other thing we need to do back here is just, I'm just, as I'm looking at this thing, I'm discovering our other stuff. This is all scanned and we need to have a front plate for this. This is just our mock-up stuff, but really what's gonna happen is there'll be a structural X that goes in here. That's a machine part that's got the same surfacing and design language as the suspension. And then there's gonna be also be a secondary assembly over here that holds the power steering, the big billet TT pump from PSS. That's gonna be living over here. I think it's up here actually. Yeah, it's up here. So that'll be like an appendage from the cross member back here. So there's still a lot of that. Now, when do we anticipate the car to be <sighs> completed? I think completed, completed would be just plumbed and ready for body work uh, and ready for wiring because both of those items it will need to leave. Um, getting all the carbon body kit on here for sure needs to leave. Uh, I don't think it's going to be something that's just designed. It'll be something where they use it for fit up and then we'll have to bring it back and make all the mounts for it because we're not going to use traditional stuff where there's like fender washers and all that. It's You won't see mounts for any of it. It'll look like a production car that has an insane dry carbon wide body on it. Has to do that, has to go out for wiring. So I think we'll get this thing as close as possible and we'll get it plumbed in house. Uh, we're working with a company for all the plumbing and the fittings. I can't wait to talk to the about them. Uh, I want to say April, May, something like that. So let's see if we can stick to it. It's there's a lot of work to be done still on this, but there's actually not that much work to be done. It's it's turning into a thing. We've done enough stuff now where this doesn't seem like such a huge undertaking. Um, it's definitely our our most insane thing we've built and then after this we're going to build the all-wheel drive car which is going to be even more insane so that's all i got right now you guys uh, again subscribe if you're not subscribed tell your friends share the channel like comment have a good day